So you're familiar in the real world, you're familiar with the language. We have a language like this language, and then we have strings in the language. So string like this, and this is strings, which could be words, and then words can uh, generate sentences. Uh, each string is a word. Strings are consisted of alphabet. So you have some alphabet. Using the alphabet, you generate the uh, strings, which are words. And then, so using these characters, these alphabets, you can generate different kind of the strings. You can. This is. These are some strings. Looks unfamiliar to us as English language, but these things. They look familiar because there are strings that we know in this language. So there is there is something in the language which is grammar, and grammar let us know if a specific string belongs to that that language or it doesn't. So that's the meaning of the grammar. So we have this set all together. We have a language. Language is consisted of some strings. Strings comes from characters. Not all the strings are valid. Uh, which they are called ungrammatical strings, but some of them, according to the rules of the grammar, they are accepted, which they are called grammatical strings. The natural language like English can be like this, so all these things are discussed, so we don't need to go to the So grammar is a device for making this distinction. It is used to select subset of strings, grammatical ones, grammatical ones from the set of all possible strings. You can calculate mathematically how many number of strings it is possible to uh, generate using these characters. If you have 26 uh, characters in English, for example, uh, strings of one character, strings of two characters, strings of three characters, four characters, and the combination of all of these strings, it would be huge, 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 because we don't have that many uh, accepted strings in a specific language, and that's grammar. Tell us which one is possible. And automaton, which is the singular of automatas, plural, is a formal device that can function as a grammar. So automaton is something that implements the grammar as a function and generates a string for us. It is also an abstract computing machine. The both ways are popular. We can say uh, automaton or we can say abstract computing, abstract machine. To understand automata, it is important to understand the properties of string and set of string. So we want to dive into uh, elements of a language and then based on that, slowly getting into the grammar and then uh, slowly going toward automata. So automata is something at the end of the day we want to talk about, but we need to uh, have a look at all of these things together. So let's make a set of finite, let's make A, a finite set of string made of alphabet. So let's imagine uh, we have alphabet A, B, C, and we want to generate some sort of string, finite set of string. B, A, C is string on A. Yeah, so you, you have combined A, B, C in different manners, and that's a string. Is B, B, A, C, B a string on A? Would you like to answer the question? There uh, should be some sort of capability here to have kind of pulling stuffs, pull, uh, pull one as a question. That's crazy if I want to create this pull now. So let me see, participant. Uh, you can say yes or no in here if you want. That's the easiest way, I think. So do you think is B A C B A a string on A? Put yes. As you can see in here, or no, in front of your name. Can you hear me, everyone? That's you say yes, no. So, can you put yes or no in here? Let's practice it to see how it works. I think you don't have the list. Do you have the list? Uh, yeah, I see. One person tries to, yeah, five yes to no. Okay, go ahead. Good. Well done. Continue. 
Continue, please. Five people say yes. B A C B A. Let's swing on A. Uh, so, so some people believe it is no. Okay, no is more than yes. So, what is the reason for no? Because it is duplicated. Do you think since do you think you, you cannot duplicate the characters in an, from an alphabet to create a string? We can't duplicate it. So that's a string. So there is no problem in that. So it is okay. So what about this one? So clear all. I will clear. So answer this question. Is D B A C a string on A? Okay, everyone say no. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah, because we have D in the string, which is not included in the character set. Very good. Well done. Thank you. Okay, that's a very good tool anyway. So I will minimize this. So the set A, A, B, C is made of a finite bunch of characters and is therefore a finite set. A string on A are assumed to be finite length. Okay. The length of a string over A is simply the number of simple it is used. B, A, C, B, A. C, we had the answer to this question already in here. So it is considered as a string. Okay. So that's a string over this alphabet. And the length of the string is not the number of characters, it's the number of locations. One location, two location, three, four, five locations. Okay. So the length of this screen, the length of the string over A in this case is five. If it was a valid string, which is not now, the length of the screen was four because we have four different locations. What is the length of this screen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the length of this screen is seven. So again, it is okay to repeat characters as it is okay to repeat characters in English. Yeah. So we have some words which they have uh, repeated characters inside it. So the length of this guy is C. Uh, so that, that's a tricky question. What is the length of the string? If I ask what is the length of this string? On this alphabet set, you should say, okay, that's not a valid string because we have D. Maybe that's a trick in this question. But what is the length of this screen? The string, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So length is the number of locations. It's not the number of characters. The alphabet is assumed to be finite as well. So in the alphabet, we have finite number of characters. A string over A may be length of one. Yes, it is completely okay. Symbols making up A are distinct from a string of length. One over A, what does it mean? See, if I have a string A with length of one, what does it mean? It could be string A, it could be string B, it could be string C. So I have a string A, B, C. Also I have character A, B, C, but they are different. A could be a character and also A could be a string, string okay? So a string C is distinct from symbol C. It should be obvious from the context which we are talking about, what which we are talking about when we specify C. Is the C in the following a symbol in the alphabet or a string? In this one, C is a symbol in the alphabet. But here C is a symbol in the alphabet or in the string. Let's say character for the alphabet to make it more clear. So C here is a character in the alphabet, but C here is a symbol inside the string. And again, C here is a character inside the alphabet. The string can also be empty. We have a string empty, which, does, which has no uh, character from the alphabet. And there is single unique string over A that is empty for any uh, alphabet, they have only one single empty string. Okay? Two strings are considered the same or identical if they have the same symbols in the same order. So these two things, question, are BAC and BCA the same string? Again, go for the pool. The participant, yeah. So is it, do you think the same string? Okay, three people say no. Participate, please. Thank you. Very good. So yeah, as you can see here, according to the definition, these two guys are not the same string because 
the uh, the same symbol, same order. Yes, you have the same symbol, but the order is not the same. So definitely, they are not identical. Or same. Okay, let's go here. Given a finite set A such that the one we saw earlier, yeah, A star is the set of all the string on A. So what does it mean? You have an alphabet set. Yeah, we have three characters in this case. What is A star? Is combination. We have a question here. Let's see. What's the question? Sorry, I'm a bit late to the lecture. What is this pool? Uh, the, we don't have actual, actually physical pool. But when I click on the participant list, you can see here, you can pick yes or no in here. Okay. The next time I ask question, you can practice. Okay, so A is the set of all string on A. What does it mean? String A, string B, first of all, empty A, B, C, then a, B, A, C, B, C, and then maybe the reverse, B, A, B, 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 C, A, A, C, A, C, B, C, C, and then the three things, A, 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 B, A, B, C, blah, 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 and so on. So you can see it is infinite number of possible strings you have in, in A, Esther. And if you remember here, we say we have valid strings and invalid strings, okay? so. Uh, union of both of these guys is A star, which means all the string possible in the language. Okay, so let's back in here. So A star, or sometimes called sigma star, sometimes the alphabet is called is shown with sigma, and sometimes then it will be sigma star, which shows all possible string on A. Operations can be performed on a string. Example: the operation to reverse a string can reverse a string. Reverse solve of a string x is denoted as x xr. So what's the reverse of this guy? A, C, B, A, B would be B, A, B, C, A. So we can have different operations on the strings. Okay. B, A, B, C, A. B, A, B, C, A. That's the reverse of this guy. So what is the reverse of uh, empty, do you think? Any answer in the comment? Any answer? Any reply? Yes, very good. Empty. Empty. The reverse of empty. The reverse of nothing is nothing. It's not the complement. It's not the complement. I mean, A S star is everything. Empty is one part of that everything. So it doesn't mean necessarily the rest of A S star. Empty is empty and its reverse is empty also. Very good. Yeah, so can we have the concatenation of the string? So it is called with hat. So if we concatenate A B A with B A C, what could be the concatenation? Any reply? Then we have the chat in here. Any reply for concatenation of A B A B A C? A B A and B A C. A B A B A C. Yes, just we concatenate both strings together. Uh, thank you. Very good. A, B, A, B, A, C. Okay, so infinite sets can be specified by listing all the elements. So sometimes we are talking about the character set, which has infinite number of alphabet, let's say, which has infinite number of characters. Sometimes the alphabet is infinite, something like that. But still, we cannot show all the uh, symbols inside the alphabet, but we can show it uh, rever recursively, something like that. So we can represent it in this way. Say, for belong to E, alphabet E. If X belong to E, then X plus two also belong to E. Nothing else belong to E. So that's a regulation that shows this infinite alphabet. So we can have a finite alphabet and an infinite alphabet. To specify that for, yeah, I have described that already. So I don't need to go. Even an alphabet A, if X is a string of length zero, then XR is X. What was the example of that? If X is a string of length zero, what is the string of length zero? Any answer in comment? What is the string of length zero? Let's keep it in here. What's the empty? Very good. So, and we saw the reverse of empty is empty. So if X is a string of length zero, then the reverse of that is strings of length zero is 
itself, which is empty. If x is string of length k plus 1, then it is of the form of wa, where a belongs to the alphabet and w belongs something to the whole, uh, the whole possible set of strings. W is string of length. So then, if x is r, w a reverse is a w r reverse. That's a regulation how to reverse the strings like we reverse in here. See, if you consider a w in here, then we want to reverse it. It would be reverse of w and then r a, right? So a w reverse is w reverse a. So we show that exactly in here. We will see the following a lot when talking about formal languages x. This means that set of all x such that you know that from mathematics. That's not something new to you. You know already that. So given our alpha of a, a language L is any subset of A star. Let's back to here. Language English is any subset of all possible strings. Any subset of all possible English, uh, strings is a language. Right? So we are talking about the same in here. So Language L is, a, is any subset of A star. In other words, the language L is a particular subset of all possible strings over A. There are infinite number of possible languages that cannot be denoted by any term. See, interestingly, again the same. So we have characters, we can generate the strings from those characters. We have infinite number of the strings, okay? Some of those strings can be ruled by a grammar. But infinite number of possible languages we can find which there is no grammar for it. And so if there is no grammar, that is ungrammar language. In other words, there are languages which are such multi-collection of a string that they cannot be completed by grammar. Okay. And then the study of formal languages try to discover, the study of formal languages tries to discover languages that can be defined by grammar. We are looking for these things. When we talk about formal languages, we are looking for languages that we can that we can define them with the grammar. These languages have a certain amount of order uh, or pattern in their string. So that's the meaning of grammar, right? You see a certain amount of order in the strings or kind of a pattern. It then tries to form a scale of complexity in patterning of the string that can be defined by each grammar. So then those patterns, those uh, orders generate a scale of complexity. Some languages, they might have simpler grammar, so lower complexity in terms of language, but some languages, they might have more complex grammars. And you, you see that in the real world also. Some languages in the real world, you see they are really more complex than the others, and it is much harder to learn them, right? Okay, so... Let's jump here. L is a language contains, we are trying to define three different languages. L is X such that X contains equal number of A's and B's. Sorry, wow, my mouse is very sensitive. So because of that, it is very hard to control it. Okay, so X uh, such that X contains equal number of A's and B's. For example, A, B, A, A, B, B, A, 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 B, 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 and so on. Okay, we might want to compare this language to the following two languages. Uh, L1 is X, we belong to a um, subset to, to the alphabet of AB, such that A and B N, and N, N is a natural number, a kind of uh, integer number plus zero. It could be uh, nothing, it could be AB, it could be A, 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 B, B, it could be A, 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 B, B, B. N doesn't mean A power to B power to, right? When we talk about A, N means repeat N, A, N time, and then repeat B, B, N time. And this one is another language which A's, number of A's is the square number of B's. So do you think, are any of these languages intuitively more complex than the other? Do you think probably the first or second language, which one could be more complicated? Any answer? in the comments, in the chat. Do you think probably which language is more complicated, more complex, one or two? 
put a number one or two in the comment if you think. Do you think which one could be more com complex? The language N, which is A, B, A, A, B, B, A, 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 B, 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 or this one, which is A, B, A, A, B, 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 4B, or A, A, uh, 16B, and so on. Which one do you think could be more complex? Yeah, language two probably is the is more complex than the other so let's see some languages are due to two more complex than other in the above example l2 seem to be more complex than it. it would take more effort to check if the number of a's and b's in a string is stood in the square relation than to determine merely they were equal so that's the reason of more com being more complex so it takes more effort to understand a device to discriminate, discriminate strings from one string in, in Eldo would be more powerful, more intelligent than the device for discriminating, discriminating grammatical string of L. Right? That makes sense. It may be more difficult to decide if language L and L1 above, L and L1 above have the same or different complexity. So that's the same thing we don't consider, we don't repeat them. A formal, grammar, a formal grammar is a deductive system of axioms and rule of interface. We talk about that. A formal grammar is something like that. You have a grammar, it takes an input and generates an output. Usually a grammar contains one axiom, the starting consisting of the initial sum rule and finite number of rules. So we have some rules, okay? We have string in this way, in the left-hand side. We have a string in the right-hand side. And based on those rules, when we take one string in the left-hand side, we generate one string in the right-hand side. That's the whole thing of the grammar. So, so the rule simply means we can rewrite it as W. So it, that's a little bit more complicated presentation of what I say. So that's an example rule. If you give A and B as the input to the rule, rule says if the input is AB, generate CDA instead. So, for example, then if you have this a string and you want to convert it to something different, uh, then you look at the a string you have, you say, okay, I have AB here. So instead of AB, then I can put CDA. That would be EB, CDA, CC. That's a rule. Okay. So in grammar, what do you have in grammar? In grammar, you have uh, non-terminal Let, let's go to the next slide and then i will discuss that so you'll learn it so a formal language grammar is considered of the rules okay what does it mean the rules rules means you have a string in the left hand side as the input and a string will be generated as the output okay that's a rule and then if you have a string in here you can say i have had this guy in the rules so i substitute this guy with this guy Grammars have two alphabets that are disjoint. We have terminal alphabet, we have non-terminal alphabet. The string we are interested in parsing with grammars are made of terminals only, okay? So, I wish I could uh, write on the screen for you. Maybe for the next session, I'll try to bring my pen and write on the screen for you. This way you can understand what I'm talking about. It is much easier. Okay, so we have terminal alphabet and non-terminal alphabet. What does it mean terminal? Terminal alphabet is the alphabet we create the language from. For example, let's back in here. Let's say this one. That's an alphabet. This A, B, C are terminal alphabet, okay? And we have another set of alphabet which they are shown with capital characters. They are called non-terminal alphabet. These two group of alphabets are disjoint. I mean, None of the alphabets in terminal category can appear in non-terminal and the other way around, okay, and vice versa. So we have two set of alphabets, A, B, C, all of them are small characters, the characters of that alphabet of that language. And we have some other character with the capital, which they are called terminal. The string we are interested in parsing with the grammar are made of the terminals. See, I have set of characters, small characters, A, B, C. And then I want to generate a language. How we should generate a language out of that characters? We are in page, we are in page, I don't know which page number. Okay, we'll back to you. 
So let's go up. That's the language here, okay? That's the language, a bigger picture. So I have a characters. I want to create some sort of a string from that character to be inside a specific language, not these things. Which, what generate this, these characters, these strings, or this word, grammar. Grammar to, to just generate this word, okay? So I should take these characters and these characters, sorry, these words inside the language, which are generated using the grammar, they should have only the characters of the alphabet. And this alphabet are the terminal alphabet. So finally, the language that I have is consisted of words or sequences or strings. Those strings have characters from the alphabet. So finally, terminal characters should appear in here, right? So that's exactly what we talked about in here. So the strings we are interested in parsing with the grammar are made from the terminal on. Terminals only. Non-terminals are willing intermediate string. So I take, let's back in here. I take this string. I take this string. I want to generate a string or a word, a sequence for my language. It is not definitely a word of my language because you can see the non-terminal characters inside it. Why? Because all the characters are capital. There is no small character inside it. So that's, that's definitely, that's not definitely a word or string or a sequence of the language I'm looking for with that graph. But this, this, this string is kind of intermediate. So I'll take this one, I'll use rules. I try to change it to different things. And finally, after lots of conversion, I will get to a string which all the characters are terminals or the small characters, okay? So non-terminals, strings with non-terminal characters, are really intermediate strings. A string on the left-hand side of a rule must contain at least one non-terminal. So, you know, that's a rule. If you get this string, you can generate this string from. If you get this string, you can generate this string from, and so on. So all the strings in the left-hand side of the rule should at least have one capital character or non-terminal character. Otherwise, you're finished with that string. And that string is a string generated for that language. So you can uh, stop working on that string. Okay? And you don't need to do any, anything, anything anymore. Okay? So that's the whole story. So in the grammar, we have two alphabets. Let's recap. We have terminal alphabet, the small characters, characters of the language. And we have non-terminal alphabet, capital characters. Okay? All the strings finally sit down in the language are consisted of terminal characters. Non-terminal characters appears inside the intermediate strings. And also, all the strings in the left side of the regulation uh, rules, they have at least one non-terminal regulation. So terminal alphabet, as I say, the small characters. Non-terminal alphabet, S, A, B, initial symbol, which is called S. I'll give you a language, okay? I'll give you a character, I'll give you a, a character set let's say, plus a grammar. And then I want you to generate that language. I want to generate that uh, strings of that language. It is interesting. When I was in high school, we had the language with my classmates. You don't believe it. It was a crazy language. It has this kind of mixture of different characters. We had English, Russian, I don't know, different characters, uh, Greek different characters inside that language, but it was a meaningful language. At that age, we didn't know that's a language or it has a grammar or something like that, but completely it could express everything in that language. It was interesting language. So see, to generate a language, you need to have a set of alphabet and you need to have a set of rules in here, but you need to have also non-terminal characters and initials. So that's the definition of uh, uh, grammar. In grammar, you have alphabet, you have you have terminal, non-terminal, initial symbol, and rules, right? So usually you say G, parentheses, the first thing is non-terminal, N, and then terminal, T, and then initial S, and then regulation R. So that's the definition of a uh, grammar. So it could be some sort of some example of the rules. 
If I give you S, rule says if you have S, you can substitute it with ADS. That's one rule. If you have S, also you can generate epsilon from it or empty. So if S appears in the left hand side of the rule, then we have two options. That's up to you which option you should take. And you say, so what will be the result if I take this one or that one? That's okay. By taking this one or that one, you are trying to generate different words for your language, and that's completely fine. Okay. So sometimes when we have a rule which in the left side, left hand side is same, instead of writing S to this guy and S to this guy, we can say S to this guy, A B S uh, line, uh, uh, vertical line, and then epsilon. So I can represent the both rules in one line. So AB can give us BA, BA can give us AB, A can give us A, and B can give us B. Convention is to use lowercase for the terminal and uppercase for the terminal. This is also means the string we try to parse with the grammar will only ever contain lowercase. We discussed that earlier. Okay, so we don't have any string in the language that has capital character or non-terminal character. The words of a language should have only terminal character, right? So let's have an example. How we can generate A, B, B, A using this language, language of this, this grammar? How we can generate that? If you give S, it will give you A, B, S. If you give S, empty, A, B, B, A, B, A, and so on. So I should definitely start with S. You cannot start with anything else in here. So that's, that's the reason why it is called initial symbol, okay? You start with S. You, you use the first rule. You give S as the input and receive ABS as the output. And then in the ABS, so that's the first step. The second step is start from here. You give ABS as the input and instead of S, you put ABS again. So you'll keep AB, you'll keep AB as it is, but instead of this S, you put ABS in here, right? And then you have another, you have what in here? You have AB, ABS. The next step is this step, right? So instead of S, you put empty. So it would be AB, AB, empty, which you can uh, get rid of that. And then in this step would be the next step. You have AB, 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 B, A. How it is generated? Instead of this AB, you use this regulation, this rule, and put BA. So it would be AB, BA. And then in this team, AB, BA, you put, instead of B, put a small b. So it would be A, capital A, capital B, small b, capital A, AB, BA. And then instead of this A, you put A, a small a, using this rule. So it would be A, B, B, A. And then again, using this B, you put B, it will be ABBA, and finally you put A for this A using this rule, and you will have ABBA. So, <clears throat> starting from initial symbol S, and using the rule, we could generate all the ABB. So in here, for example, if you wanted to take A instead of, if you wanted to take use this to use this one, you could have small ABS, and then the next thing you could say, instead of B, I would use small b. So it would be a small a, a small b, and then s. And instead of s, you could say, I consider empty. It would be a small a, a small b, empty, and then it would be a b. So I could generate a b also. So see, by different options you have in the uh, parsing the strings of the language, you generate different strings of language. Who knows if the time people used to invent the languages they knew they should do that or not. <laughs> definitely it has been the other way around. I mean, definitely languages have been shaped over the years and then they started to understand the characteristics of the languages and the nature of them, right? So that's interesting. So, so that's the whole story, okay? Question, we have question. Thanks for asking. How come you went from a small s to a d? but you actually started with the BS. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> this slide has been created from uh, LaTeX. 
and I tried to change it to capital S, but it is a small, I don't know why. We don't have a small S because the language, our language is consisted of uh, non-terminal non -termin A and B terminal. We don't have a small S. So although it is a small, it is capital. Sorry for that. Does a small S means the same thing as S also? Yeah, yeah. So that's the answer. So sorry for that, I'll try to change it. In the next one, that's okay. But in this one, I don't know why it tries to, maybe the space, we, don't, we didn't have enough space in here, I don't know. I'll try to change it, make it correct it anyway, okay? So that's the whole story. We generate symbol, it looks interesting, isn't it? And maybe it, it makes learning other languages more interesting to us. And even our mother tongue language, you know? Looking at that to see how these characters, these strings, these words have been. Okay, note, note there are often lots of possible derivations from the same string and grammar. The string ABBA is said to be generated from grammar. The language generated by the grammar is the set of all possible strings in the generator. So that's the same. You should get rid of this slide anyway. The generative power of a grammar is determined by what kind of rules. See, if we have simple rules, probably it is not uh, the power of generativeness of that grammar would be probably low and also the other way around. So the rules show us how powerful is the generativeness of that language. Grammars that belong to the same generative power contain rules of the same kind. That's interesting. Probably in the real world, we can compare the same languages from the same families, maybe English, French, and German, etc. Maybe I don't know, I'm not familiar with that, but maybe they are from the same family, etc. So they have the same level of uh, generative power. So they have the same kind of rules. Chomsky hierarchy classifies grammars according to the kind of rewrite rules. So based on the rules we have, Chomsky, a very famous scientist, has introduced a hierarchy which classifies the grammars in different levels and levels. At the top of Chomsky hierarchy are the most general grammars that have fewer restrictions, kind of the rules they have. So if you have uh, fewer restrictions, you can generate lots of more strings. If you have more restriction on the grammar, definitely, obviously, you will have a smaller number of strings you can generate because it says it is not possible, it is not possible, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. So the options would be limited, okay? So the toppest level in the hierarchy of the Chomsky is the most general grammar. Type zero is the topmost grammar, and it is it only has one restriction on its rule. That the LHS must contain at least. So LHS means left hand side of the rule. So the top zero, the toppest level in the Chomsky hierarchy has this restriction, only one restriction. The restriction is in the left hand side of the rule, you should have at least one non terminal symbol. Type zero grammars are also called unrestricted rewriting symbols. Okay, so that's like that. We have type zero. Type one grammars is a subset of type zero. That means you can find the string of type one in the string of type zero language, but you cannot find everything which are generated in type zero inside type one, and so on. So whatever you get down in here, you have more restrictions. You have less number of strings. Uh, and that's the whole story of the Chomsky. Most restricted, least restricted language and grammar. So type zero. Left hand side of rule must have at least one non-terminal symbol. Type one. Each rule is of the form alpha A, B, alpha psi B, where psi is not empty. So it says, if you have alpha and B, if you have A, it will be converted to this guy. Type two, each rule is of the form A to psi. And type three, each rule is of the form A to XB or A to X. So that's really, really restrictive. That you see, each uh, non-terminal alphabet is definitely converted to a terminal alphabet. And in this case, each non-terminal alphabet is converted to a terminal followed by a non-terminal alphabet. 
but you don't have that restriction in here. You have psi. Psi is kind of a string which is not equal to NP. Okay, and also this one. You see, they have less restrictions, like the regulation we had in here. If you remember, in here, see, that's like alpha uh, a, for example, beta, and alpha psi beta. So this thing is converted to this thing. Of course, it's, it's a string we have converted, but it could be also in the root section. Okay. Type C, type 3, each rule is of the form A to XP or A to X. Type 3 grammars must have a single non-terminal on the left-hand side and right-hand side consisting of a string terminal single or a string of terminal single followed by a single non-terminal. The left-hand side at least, again, it is not at least, interestingly. In type C grammars, type 3 grammars, left-hand side is a single non-terminal, C, A, a, it's not like A, B, A, B, C, blah, blah, okay? And on the right-hand side is a non-terminal plus a ter terminal or terminal followed by non-terminal. Type grammars generates regular languages, regular languages, okay? The rule S to, to empty is allowed if S does not appear on the right side of any rule. So in the language, in the grammar, we can have this rule if S does not appear in the right side. Okay, if does not appear in the right side. So there are some rules. S to AI, A to AI, A to BB, B to BB, B to B. It looks like that's a regular language. Why? Because in the left-hand side of the rule, you see only single terminal character. And in the right-hand side of the rules, we can see a terminal followed by a non-terminal and empty. Each rule is of the form of, in type 2, each rule is of the form of A to psi. Left-hand side of the rule is a non-terminal. Right-hand side is a string of terminals and non-terminal. S, type 2 grammar generated, generate context-free languages. So we have regular languages, the most restrictive one, sitting here, regular languages. And then we have context-free languages sitting here. And the rule to generate these languages is like that, A to something. So in the left-hand side, again, you have only one non-terminal character. And in the right side, you have anything, A, Epsilon, sorry, Epsilon or MT, A, B, B, A, B, B, S, A, A, S, B, A, A, B, 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 C. And the languages that are generated using this kind of grammars and rules, it is called context-free language. And in type one, each rule is of the form of this. Alpha and beta can be empty, but psi cannot be empty. It could be something A, something, it could be something A and then and string. And that is thing shouldn't be empty. Type one grammars generate context-sensitive languages. Another way to describe the restriction on grammar rule is to say that you can rewrite a string with another that is at least its length is uh, its length. So, so we are talking about the rules, yeah? So that's kind of the characteristic and nature of the rules. What, how, how it is the nature of the rules? The nature of the rules is like that. You rewrite a string, you have a string in left side, you generate a new, new string. That means actually you have rewritten the string, okay? But you should be careful. It is not shrinking. I mean, at least it's the length. I mean, in the length of the string in the right side after the conversion, definitely it is the same length of the left, length, left side and even more. What is it? It's not shrinking. Let's back in here. Here, look, we have converted, we have rewrite, we have rewritten. This character to here, the length is 3, 1, the length is 5, 3, the length is 4, 5, we have decreased the length, and so on, you can go ahead. Also, uh, of course, we have not decreased the length, that has been empty, see, but that empty goes away. So that's again, the 4 is 4, and 4 is 4, 4 is 4, 4 is 4, 4 is 4, so it's not shrinking cable. You cannot decrease the length of a string by conversion. In this case, if you see that the conversion has happened because why? Because we have changed S 
from here to MT. Let's check we don't have any question, okay. Okay, so it's non-shrinking. The rules are non-shrinking, that's important, right? Type programmers are generally recursively in variable languages. The productions have no restriction. They are any base structure grammar, including all formal grammars. The production can be in the form of alpha to beta. The left-hand side of the suite could be terminals and non-terminals. There is no limitation. If it is, at least it should be non-terminal, or there should be only one character, etc. But again, it says at least one non-terminal should appear. Left-hand side cannot be null or empty. Right-hand side is a string of terminal and non-terminal. See, S to A, B, A, S, S to M, T, A, B, B, A, B, 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 A, A, B, A, A, B, B. So that's the whole story. So let's summarize the Chomsky hierarchy. We have uh, less restrictive language in here. We have lower number of rules. Rules are so easy. Lower number of restrictions. And finally, languages which we create from them, that grammar is recursively enumerated. And then if you have a little bit more restriction, we have context sensitive languages. And then more restrictive, it is context free languages. And then more uh, restrictive, it is regular languages, right? So we can generate a string inside a language with this type of grammar using this grammar, but we cannot generate a string of this language from this gram you know the, the meaning of the subset okay so languages can also be characterized by abstract computing devices called automata there is also a hierarchy of automata this automation hierarchy corresponds to the grammars in the chunks here. so the same story would happen to the automata also we will discuss it later that's not something related to our topic at the moment but like you say uh, that would happen to